Hey guys, so this is just a quick video. I'm going to show you how to convert vector paths to um, a path that you can draw directly in highs. So let's um, take a look at this. You're going to need the producer um, executable. Uh, that comes with the high source code. So if you go to the highs download page and um, we'll go to the script node branch and just uh, download the zip file if you haven't already. If you've already got the high source code, then the producer executable is in tools, producer, and then it'll be one of these depending on which operating system you're on. The next thing you're going to need is a vector image to convert. And this tool works best with simple vectors, so icons, uh, text, and simple images. So I'm on the Font Awesome website. Let's just find a vector image here. I'm just going to search for a star. So you could even use the font directly with InHighs because you can load custom fonts. So with Font Awesome, you could just use the font, but I'm going to do it as an SVG file, a vector file, and convert it. So I'm just going to download the vector file from here. So we'll save that. Okay, now once you've got your vector file, Let's just go to the downloads folder. Here it is. So we need to um, open the producer. Now, when you open producer, it may look like that if you've opened a project in it previously, or it may look more like this if you've never opened a project in it. Either way, it doesn't matter. We're just going to go to the tools menu and select this SVG path converter. So with that open, I'm going to right click on the SVG and open it in a text editor. So this is the SVG opened in a text editor. So SVG files aren't a rendered image like a bitmap or a JPEG. They're actually just data that instructs the program that displays the SVG image how to display it. So it's just a set of instructions basically. And what we're looking for in here is this thing that starts with the D equals. And it might start with something slightly different uh, depending on the file you open, but it's going to end in a Z. So I'm going to highlight all of this inside the quotation marks. And I'm pressing Control C to copy that. And I'm going to paste it into this box here in the path converter. And you can see it's recognized it and it's rendered the star there. And then once you're happy with that, click this copy button. And what that's going to do is copy this stuff that it's generated here to your clipboard. So I've copied that. So now we're back in highs. I'm going to add an interface to this blank project. And what we need to do is we need to give highs this path data. So first we need to create a path. And to do that, we just create a variable. So const var, and I'm just going to call it path. But you can give it a more meaningful name if you want. You can call it star or something like that, or star path, whatever's uh, suitable. And then you're going to say equals content dot create path. And now we've got this path object, we can load in our data. So um, I've still got the data on the clipboard. So the first thing I'm going to do is put that data into an array. So I'm just going to call it uh, const var and we'll call it path data. And this is going to be an array. Now the data we got from the path converter, this is um, this is going to need to be edited slightly because it's not in a standard JavaScript array. So if I paste this in, you can see we have this stuff in here as well. And then we've got a curly bracket and then we've got all this stuff. So we just need to tidy, tidy it up a bit. So we've got just these numbers. So I'm just going to delete all of this stuff here. And I'll delete all of this. And now we've just got the array of numbers. Okay, the next thing we need to do is assign this data to this path. So we're going to type the name of our path variable, which is just path in this case. And we're going to use a function called load from data. And then we're going to pass in the path data array. Okay, so now we've got our vector loaded as a path. And we can now draw this path onto a panel, just like we would usually when drawing um, images or vectors onto a panel. So I'm going to add a panel to this interface. I'm going to right click on the panel and create a script declaration. 
So now we're going to add a paint routine function to this panel. So this is something I've covered in other videos. So just put the name of the panel, set paint routine function G. And there's our paint routine. So if I hit F5 now, that panel is going to vanish from over here because we're, um, we're taking over the control of drawing it. So there we go. And we're going to set the color. So we'll do G dot set color. And we can set this to, let's set it to blue. Half transparency. Ooh, that's not blue. That's blue. So we'll set that to blue. And now we're going to draw the path. So we're going to type G dot draw path. There it is. And the first thing it wants is the path variable, the path object, I would say, because we created a path object. And ours is called path, so that's nice and easy. The next thing it wants is the area. So that's the uh, the X, the Y, the width, and the height. So the X and the Y is relative to the top left corner of the panel. And the thickness is if, in this case, we're going to draw an outline of the star. So this is the... Um, the width of the outline. So I'll set that to five. So for the X and the Y, let's just put this at 10, 10. So it will be around here. And the width, we can make that a hundred and the height a hundred. And I'll hit F5 and a blue star should appear there. There we go. Let's make that a bit bigger. And let's put it right in the center of that panel. So we're going to do this dot get width divided by two minus a hundred because the star is 200 across this dot get height divided by two minus a hundred because the star is a hundred high. So that's right in the center of the panel now, and I'm going to set a background color for this panel. So we'll just do G dot fill all and we'll just set it to like, I don't know, sort of gray color. Okay, now if we want to fill the star in rather than just doing an outline, I'll comment out that function and what we can do is g.fillPath. So pretty much the same function, just instead of draw path, it's fill path. We give it the name of the path object, which is path. We give it the area, which is the same as we've got there. And we just don't have to give it the thickness because there's, it's not an outline. So there we go, there's a filled in one. So that is how you take an SVG image and convert it to a path that you can draw directly in highs. If you're going to be using a lot of paths in your project and you don't want to clog it up with all this path data stuff, you can put them all in an external file and just reference them from your main project file. That's what I tend to do. All right, guys, so on my desktop now, I've got two vector files. One is just um, the LibreWave logo. It's just a text um, vector. And the other is some shapes. So let's have a look at the shapes image actually. So we've got a square, we've got this ring and we've got what looks like a triangle, but it's slightly off center. And that was created using the star tool in Inkscape. And then the other one is just the LibreWave logo. So let's look at the text first. So we'll open this in a text editor and it's got a bit more stuff to it than that font awesome icon had. Uh, but what we're looking for is that D equals, there it is and then the block of text starting with an M and ending in a Z. So I'm going to copy that and we'll paste it into the path converter and straight away it converts it and we get the LibreWave logo. So again, we could copy this data and use it as the path data within highs and then just draw it on a panel in the usual way. So now let's have a look at this shapes one. I'm going to open this in the text editor. Now these are three distinct shapes, so we'd expect to find three individual paths for them. So let's see what we actually get. So I, I'm straight away, I'm seeing this tag here that says rect. So I know that's going to be for the rectangle shape. The next part we come to is this one that says star. So I know that's going to be for the triangle shape. And then what do we have down here? Then we've got another path starting. So this is going to be for the ring. Now let's start with the rectangle. The rectangle doesn't have a D equals thing with the text starting with M and ending in Z. It doesn't have anything for us to copy. The reason for that is the rectangle is just a primitive shape. All it has is a width and a height and an X and a Y. So 
it doesn't have a path for us to copy across and you don't need it you could just draw a rectangle in hives using the vector tools anyway so we don't get anything for the rectangle so the star because it's not just a primitive shape it's like a wonky triangle um, we do get the path for it there it is there so we've got the text starting with an m and ending in the z so we'll copy that and we'll paste that so we get that and again we can choose to fill the path or not fill the path it doesn't make a difference because we decide that in highs depending on if we draw it or fill it and then the last one the ring again we've got the d equals then we have the text starting with m and ending in a z so we can copy that across and we get that ring shape so if you have a more complex file like this you've just got to work out where each of your shapes are and copy across the paths that you want to copy now what happens if we copy two of these across at once so we've got the ring there let's also copy and paste the triangle so we get both the shapes placed in there and they're actually in the correct positions if we look at the original image again they're actually in the same positions as they are in the original image all right guys i hope this little tutorial was useful and um, you can use it to copy your own vector shapes across into highs really easily if you have any questions comments or suggestions leave them below the video if you'd like to see more videos like this you can support me on patreon there's a link in the video description as well i post a detailed tutorial video there every month which eventually makes its way onto youtube and i also post lots of little things over there i, I post something usually every week sometimes more frequently than that thank you again for watching and i'll see you next time